This is an overview of URSA, the Infrared Science Archive, prepared for the DPS meeting in October 2021. Before I can explain to you what URSA is, I first have to explain what IPAC is. IPAC is a science and data center for astrophysics and planetary science. It's physically based at Caltech, but it's an entirely separate entity from the Caltech Astronomy Department. IPAC's charter is to support all sorts of NASA missions and archives. Some of the data we have at IPAC include Spitzer, Wise, Herschel, Planck, Kepler, IRAS, and many more. IPAC also includes NED, the NASA Extragalactic Database, the NASA Exoplanet Archive, and URSA. In terms of planetary science specific things at IPAC, we've got centers and missions, archives, and future missions. I can't quite bear to take the Spitzer Science Center off this list because it just sh shut down last week. But there's also NEOI, ZTF, and NEXI. In terms of archives, there's Ursa, Kulla, the Exoplanet Archive, and NAID. In the future, there's Lunar Terra Blazer, Roman Chronograph, Neo Surveyor, SphereX, Euclid, and TMT. In terms of observatories that are actively delivering new data to Ursa, it includes WISE, SOFIA, IRTF, and ZTF. We're planning for Euclid, SphereX, and Neo Surveyor, and these are just the things that are relevant for planetary science. So what is URSA? URSA is the Infrared Science Archive. It is one of the biggest pieces of IPAC. It's chartered to be the home to NASA's infrared and submillimeter data, and it was originally founded to be the home of IRAS data. We have petabytes of images and billions and billions of rows in catalogs. At least 10% of all refereed astronomy journal articles over the last several years use at least in part data that ultimately came from URSA. This is URSA's homepage, and I wanted to specifically call out three items. The documentation button here has a list of all the tools and the documentation that goes with them, but there's also copious documentation accompanying each of the data deliveries that we have. URSA has a YouTube feed with more than 100 videos. There's all sorts of tutorials demonstrating various features and functions of our tools. There's also the help desk, ready and waiting to answer any questions that you have. This is URSA's YouTube feed, and it is surprising to me that YouTube doesn't have a really good way of organizing videos. Really, the only thing they have is playlists, and I think they're originally designed to collect videos that you would play in order. In this context, I'm using the playlist as sort of tables of contents that collect videos on a theme, not necessarily meant to be watched from the beginning to the end, but here's a collection of relevant videos. So if you go to the playlists page, you can see without trying too hard, there's several planetary related playlists already visible. But if you actually search on solar system, you'll see there's lots more solar system relevant videos in the feed. So we're not quite at the stage of click here to get everything we have on your object. We have a lot of data and a lot of it is served with a common interface. So once you master it, you can easily pick up other tools like it. But in order to get access to all the things you need, all the data that you need, you're going to have to use multiple tools and approaches to search in multiple places, at least for now. This is an overview of three different kinds of Ursa solar system searches. I'll have more examples of each of these shortly. But in just in terms of an overview, for pointed observations, by that I mean observations that were deliberately pointed at a known solar system object and tracked on the object. This only applies for pointed observatories. Then there's preco researches, which given predicted locations, looks for observations that were serendipitously observed of that target. Doesn't matter, it doesn't tell you whether or not the object has been detected or recognized as a moving object, but the, it's in the field of view. Then thirdly, there's pipeline detections that were recognized as being moving objects and associated by the pipeline with a known object. So in terms of pointed observations, by this I mean like the spacecraft pointed and tracked, it knew it was observing a solar system object at the time. So that includes uh, observatories like Spitzer and Herschel. You can search in these databases by uh, solar system object name, which then gets resolved to a NAIF ID. And the primary purpose of a NAIF ID is to disambiguate targets with similar names like Juno the asteroid from Juno the spacecraft. For an example, here's uh, pointed observations in the Spitzer Heritage Archive. If I clicked on moving object on the left, then I can search for observations of Gaspra. So this is not looking for serendipitous observations. This is looking for uh, observations that targeted Gaspra and tracked on it. And indeed, there are two observations, two IRS observations in the Spitzer Heritage Archive. 
Um, the brand new aspect of the Sophia archive coming out later this week is an abstract search. So this is what happens when you search in this collection of Sophia abstracts for the word comet. Then on the left, there's a proposal ID column and you can click on any of the proposal IDs and it will load all the corresponding observations into the Sophia archive tool. So then you can explore what the data look like for the data taken as part of that observation. Now, pre-cover your observations. Let's say you discover a new object and you know its orbit. The next step would be, did any observation at URSA serendipitously image this object? So it's not really the recovery of an object so much as a pre-covery of the object. So the data sets that work with this kind of calculation right now include WISE, Spitzer, PTF, and ZTF, and Planck. And under the hood, the thing that's running is most, the moving object search tool. So in the Spitzer Heritage Archive, you can click on Precovery on the left, and then you can look to see if this particular rock was observed just by chance in the process of other observations. And note that I've limited the time search to be only a couple of months. This calculation, this kind of search can take a long time because the calculations are complex. So it, it's useful to put at least some date constraints on the observation. So that, that's what it found. And it's probably incredibly difficult to see that there are indeed little boxes with X's in them in these observations. So it's not saying that this object was detected in these observations. It's saying that the object was present in the field of view. And it's going to be up to you to figure out whether or not you think they, it was detected or shift and add the images to get a net flux in the infrared. The WISE image service has a similar thing where you can click on the solar system object or orbit, put in an object. Now remember that WISE is doing an all sky survey, so it's not tracking on any of these observations. So this is, even though it just says solar system object and orbit, it doesn't say pre-covery. It's the same sort of search. It's the same um, machinery under the hood that's running. And so here you see it's plotted several collections of apparitions. Here are all of those red points because it covers the whole sky. It's plotted on an all sky image. And then here's the individual frames in which that object appears. Each frame is centered on the object and the X's are other apparitions um, found by this tool. So here's what most looks like when you use it directly. Uh, if you put in an asteroid and a time range, it will calculate the orbit and then give you the corresponding images that might contain this object. So previously known as the third category. So in order to make this work, the pipeline has to be run when it knows about a given object. And if it knows about the given object, it can, and it detects the given object, it can try to associate the various apparitions of that object in the data. But here's a pretty big caveat. It ha the object has to be known about it when the pipeline is run. So the 2MAS pipeline was last run in something like 2003, and at the time there were 80,000 objects known in the solar system. But now it's more like 700,000. So there's an awful lot of objects that weren't known about the last time the 2MAS pipeline was run. So in practice, this really only works for WISE data because it's recently processed, and so it has 700,000 objects that it's trying to, to locate. So in the WISE image service, you can search on catalogs by clicking on the catalogs tab and find this catalog, the known solar system object possible association list. You have to look in the NeoWISE reactivation data database in order to find this, but this is where the pipeline is trying to associate appar apparitions of known objects. Um, you can also look, there's other catalogs that might be relevant here in the enhanced and contributed products. There's a catalog of diameters and albedos of solar system small bodies. You can also get at these catalogs through the catalog search tool. You have to, again, look for that corresponding catalog. And then you're dumped into the next screen. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can put in SQL constraints. So you can say, give me all of the observations of things that were identified as Neptune and that's what it found. So overall, in terms of whys, the catalog searches at the end of the day is ultimately coming back to searching a range of RA and DEC as a function of time. So that's what most is really doing. So you need to search each catalog delivery within whys separately, but if you have a known object, you can use the known SSO catalog. 
If you've got a new object or the non-Newtonian effects matter a lot, you can use tracklets to find the RA and DEC range and then search, or you can use the WISE image service to look for apparitions. You can, when you search the WISE image service, it will allow you all sorts of interactivity with the images in the catalogs, and you can search multiple deliveries for images at once, as opposed to searching each delivery separately. From within the catalog service, you can search on a couple of different catalogs. It allows SQL restrictions on the columns, and you can do an asteroid or a comet-specific search in those catalogs. So in summary, in terms of the tools, you can do archive searching via our website. Uh, the graphical user interface, or GUI, has lots of similar look and feel entry to many different data sets. Sophia Wise, IRTF, Spitzer, ZTF, and you can search by NAFE ID for dedicated observations, but you can also search by orbital parameters. And there's lots of visualization there to explore the data and see if you want to pursue that data set further. Once you've gotten the hang of it, uh, for a few observations, uh, doing it by hand that way, you might be interested in the API, the application programming interfaces. You can interact with URSA's archives from the command line using, for example, Python VO tools. And then most is the machinery that's doing the pre-covery observations that works for WISE, Spitzer, ETF, and some of the SOFIA images. At this time, it's kind of hard to get a serendipitous spectrum. So that's why the SOFIA images are the only ones that are included. So in terms of the main takeaway points from this, there's lots of data and data centers at IPAC, which is at Caltech. There's lots of data and tools specifically at URSA that are relevant for planetary science. At this time, you do need to search each data set separately. You can search by NAFE ID or look for serendipitous observations of your target based on orbital parameters. We've got a help desk, tons of videos, and lists of tools with all the documentation at the website. I'll be at the booth the rest of the DPS, and you can reach us at the help desk at that email.